Hello and welcome to a Maths with Harry lesson. In this video, we're gonna have a look at transforming trig graphs. On the screen, we can see we have got many different trig graphs on there. They're all trig graphs from trigonometry because they all involve a sine, a cos or a tan, okay? Those are the three trigonometric uh, ratios or functions. Those are all involved in our equations of the graphs, so they have to be trig graphs, okay? We've got things like sine x plus one, 15 times sine x, inside the bracket here, tan of, and then in the bracket, x plus 45 degrees, tan of minus x, cos of theta, and what we want to do is I'm going to go through and reveal what the transformations are and what makes that transformation. So we'll start off with the first one and we've got y is equal to sine x plus 1. Now note that the sine x, if it was just y is equal to sine x, that's just the normal trig graph of sine that we had a look at in the last lesson. But this time we have got, and I'll highlight it in red, the plus one. So we're gonna take sine of x, we're gonna put some x into that function, and then we're just gonna get the answer and add one to it. That's what that equation actually means. Sine x, and then a plus one. In terms of transform, transform, uh, transforming the graph, what we're actually doing is taking the original graph and doing something to that. So that's what I'm meaning. That's what the relationship is in terms of uh, transforming. So sine x plus one, basically in quotation marks, this is what it does. It moves the graph up by one in the positive y direction. And I've shortcutted that here. It moves the graph up because we've got that plus one. So it moves the normal graph, sine x, up by one in the positive y direction because we've got positive here, okay? So if I just do a quick sketch so that you can just kind of get a, an idea of what's happening, let's say this is our normal sine graph and I can't sketch it perfectly so I'll sketch it a little bit like that, okay? In fact, I'm gonna get rid of that bit just so that's 360 degrees and that's zero degrees, and we had a look at that in the last video. Sine x, that's y sine x. Y is sine x plus one. We'll just move the graph up all to, you know, one up in the positive direction. So we'll actually move it like this, and this is what it will look like. We'll do it in red. It will look something like, and I'm trying to think it's going to come like that. It would look something like that. The exact same shape, but just moved one up, okay? So hopefully that's not too tricky to understand. And the reason it moves it in the y direction is because it's outside of the bracket here. We've just got the function plus one. So it just moves it vertically. If and in fact, it's actually on the second example. If we had a negative here, then it would move it down by one, just like this example here. Y is equal to sine x minus three. It's just gonna move the sine graph down by three in the negative y direction, okay? Um, if we just say down by three, we don't really know which way we're going down. Are we maybe doing it a little bit on the vertical? Are we going down in, in terms of, you know, going down in the angles, moving to the left? We're not, we're going down in the minus y direction. Okay, so if it, was, if it was to go down by three, let's say it was down by one, just so I can draw it easily on the graph. Down by one, that would be how the graph would look. It would look something like that. The exact same shape, but we can see this point here was at zero, so moving it down by one, it must now be at minus, minus one. Okay, if we're moving it down by three, which we are doing here, then it would be minus one, minus two, minus three. It would be kind of somewhere like that. Okay, and of course that's going off the graph quite a lot. So I might get a little bit confusing there, but that's what that does. So if you have any trig function and you are adding something to it outside the bracket, so it's not in with the bracket here, it's there, and it could also be written like this, one plus sine x, doesn't matter which way around you write it. Then if you are adding something to it, you're moving it up in the y direction or up vertically. And if you are subtracting something to it, here is the original graph. 
and this is your transformation. It's going down if you're subtracting. Okay, if we have a look here, we've got y is equal to 15 sine x. So this is the original graph. That's where the sine comes from, sine of x. But we've got some transformation because we've got some multiplier on the front. We've got 15, not just sine x. We've got 15 sine x. And this is what that does. It stretches by a scale factor 15 vertically. I'm just going to add my quotation mark back on there. So that there, SF, just means scale factor. And that is just the multiplication or the multiplier that you've got out the front. And it does a stretch of a scale factor 15 vertically. You've probably seen this at GCSE before. But again, if I just do a little sketch here, okay... Uh, I'll draw the axis back on. That is my, let's do it in black. That is my sine graph, okay? And if we've got 15 sine x, we would just have a vertical stretch scale factor 15. So it would kind of be something like this. And it would pass through at the exact same points. It would just be a lot stretched, okay? vertically and this point here if we were to go along would be minus 15 and that point there would be 15 because we've got that multiplier of 15. Okay y is equal to cos of theta that is just our normal cos graph that has no transformation on it whatsoever so that is just the general shape of the graph that we looked at in the last lesson. Here we have got, uh, apart from this last one, just these four here, we've got something in the brackets. Here we've got tan and then we've got tan of all of this, x plus 45 degrees. What that does is moves the graph across 45 degrees in the negative x direction. So a little bit like when we're looking at transformations of just normal functions, if we have a positive here, it actually goes to the left, it moves that way. You don't add it on, it takes it off, okay? So you go across 45 in the negative x direction. If we have a negative here, which we do, we're looking at the sine function here, sine of theta minus 90. Because we had a positive here, and it doesn't matter which trig function it is, they're all the same. Because we had a positive here, we move in the negative. We've got a negative here, so we're going to move in the positive. We're going to move across 90 degrees because that's what we're doing in the positive x direction. Okay, tan of minus x, we'll do this one. In fact, no, we'll do this one first actually. Y is cos of 2x. We have a multiplier inside the function here. Here we had it on the outside. Here we have it on the inside. That's what does the transformation. And this is a little bit different because the multiplier is in the bracket with the x. We have a stretch horizontally, but a scale factor of the reciprocal that is in the bracket. So here we have a two in the bracket. So the scale factor is a reciprocal. It's a half. We'll show through an example what that looks like in a minute. OK, so it's a stretch of a half horizontally. Because it's a half, it's actually a squish. We're not stretching it outwards, we're stretching it inwards. OK, and we'll look at that in the first example. Tan of minus x is a reflection and it's a reflection in the y-axis. And I always remember, I remember it this way. We have a negative with the x. So it's a reflection in the y. It kind of works opposite. You would think because it's with the x, it's a reflection in the x-axis. That's not the case because the negative is with the x in the bracket with the x. The negative is with the x. So it's a reflection in the y. And then here, doesn't matter what trig function it is. It's just an example. We're using sine here. The negative is outside the front. That's our normal sine x. And we have a negative Let's just highlight the negative. We have a negative out the front. So this is a reflection in the x-axis. Here the negative is not with the x, so it's a reflection in the x. It kind of works opposite, okay? So maybe just read through some of those and let's have a look at what those actually mean graphically through some examples. 
Example one is here. You might want to pause and have a go, but it says on the same axes, so just draw one set of axes and do both graphs on the same one, sketch the graphs of cos theta and cos of three theta in this interval here. Now, when you do trig sketching, it will most likely give you a interval to sketch the graph. And the reason for that is, just ignore this question for a minute, if we were asked to draw sine, sine looks, not a perfect, but it looks like that. And if it didn't give me an interval, I could just continue sketching that forever and ever and ever across the page. So that's why you get an interval, so you know you're just drawing a little section of the graph. Okay, so we want to draw the graphs of cos theta and cos 3 theta in the interval of 0 to 360 degrees, and that's x. So, oh, actually that should be uh, theta, that should be, sorry, because cos is given in terms of theta, cos theta and cos 3 theta. So that's your interval. Doesn't really matter, it's just nice to get the correct terminology. So that's your theta axis and this is your y axis because we're actually drawing y is cos theta and the other one we'll do in red, y is 3, oh, sorry, cos 3 theta, okay? So, have a go at sketching those if you want. Look back at the examples when we had a multiplier within the bracket and see if you can work out what the scale factor is. Even if you can't draw it, don't worry, just try and work out the scale factor. And then I'm actually going to draw these on a graphing package. So, pause and have a go and then press play and we'll draw the graphs. Okay, I'm going to turn over to a, um, a app called Desmos, and it's actually really, really useful. You can just draw graphs on this. So if you're ever doing homework or practicing, make sure you download this app so you can draw graphs and see. So first of all, we need to draw cos of x. Now, I'm using x here. It wanted cos theta, but it's exactly the same. It's just that our horizontal axis is theta. Here it's going to be x. Okay, cos of x, we know that that is just the normal cos graph, and we looked at that in the previous uh, lesson. So we can just add that on to our graph there. Okay, we can see here, um, if I zoom in, it's passing through at 1. Okay, oops, and I don't know why that has stretched like that. Let me zoom that like that, that's better. Uh, here it's passing through at one, it's passing through zero at 90 degrees, it's down at minus one there, and we have that repetition every 360 degrees. There is one shape, I don't have a pointer I don't think, so I can't point with anything. But there is our uh, re re repetition of 360, kind of in that frame there. And then we have another repetition, we have another repetition, and that just carries on forever. Okay, so there's our graph of cos of x. Now, cos of 3x is a stretch horizontally of a scale factor of a third, because you take the reciprocal of the multiplier that's with the x. So we've got cos 3x, so it's a stretch horizontally of scale factor a third. So we're not stretching it out, we're actually stretching it in. And that's because it's a third scale factor. So we get this purple graph here. We can see what we get is where we had one rotation or one drawing of our first repetition of our 360 degrees. Within that, we have one full rotation. But actually, when we do this sketch of cos 3 theta, we have three full cos graphs. And just pause and have a look at that and make sure you can see that, okay? There's one. There's another, and there's another within the one from the cos of x, okay? So we're wanting to sketch that between 0 and 360. I might struggle to sketch it, but let's have a go. We'll do the cos of theta um, like this, and it doesn't have to be a perfect line because it's only a sketch for me here. It's going to um, pass through there, and then does it pass through... Hang on a minute, it needs to be here at 180 and then back up there, I think, to then pass through. Do that a bit better to pass through there. Not a perfect shape, but you get the idea. And we actually just have one of those there, that's cos of theta. For the cos of 3 theta, we're going to have three lots of that because it's a stretch inwards, horizontally, scale factor 
a third. So I'm going to compare it to my graph here and it's got to kind of pass something like this. Pass through at zero in the same place and then it's just going to repeat that. So pass through like that. It's still, I think, got to pass at minus one there. Yes, it does. So pass through minus one there and then back up and then back down to pass through zero, back up like that, and then where does it go back up? I think, yeah, it needs to go back up like that to be there. Okay, so we can see where we had our one cos graph there, for cos of three uh, theta, we have three lots of that. There's one, there's another, and there's another within the space of having one. Hopefully that makes sense. Example two, and it's actually the final example for this video, says sketch the graphs of three sine of x between zero and 360, and then minus tan of theta between minus 180 degrees and 180 degrees. And you're gonna do these on different axes, okay? I've given you a hint of the axes for part A, but have a go at drawing it and also have a go at part B as well. Think back to what it means when you have a multiplier outside of the function and also a negative outside of the function. So pause and have a go, press play, and then we'll draw the graphs. Okay, looking at part A, if we just think about our normal sine graph, we know, and I'll draw it in grey, that it looks something like this. I'm going to need to put my uh, y values on, but it kind of comes up, it comes down, it goes down like that, and then it comes back up, okay? This point is 1, that is 0, and that's minus 1. That is what we have for our normal sine. Here, though, we have 3 sine of x. So remember, looking back at the examples that I gave you, here we had a 15 sine x. It stretched a scale factor of 15 vertically. So instead of it going to one, the maximum, because it, it was stretched, it went to 15. So here, we're not gonna have one and minus one. We're going to have three and minus three because we're stretching it vertically by a scale factor of three. So that's gonna be three and that's gonna be minus three. Now, when I was learning this, I always got confused because to me, that looks like the sine graph. But actually, the sine graph, now we have that scaling on the y-axis, would look something like this. And it's not perfect, but that is what the sine graph now would kind of look like because we've stretched the gray graph, this here, and if you ever draw two of the same graphs, but you only have to draw one, always label it. That's three sine x. This graph here is just sine x. Okay, so hopefully you can see what that three does. It stretches it vertically with a scale factor three. So here is about one, and here is about minus one, okay? We can see this is the correct graph because we have the correct markings on it. This is a minimum of minus three and that is a maximum of three. Okay, part B, we've got a negative outside of tan theta and we want to sketch it in this interval, minus 180 to 180. So this is the setup for your graph, minus 180 all the way through to 180. And we have a negative outside of the bracket. We've got minus tan of x. This is what we're trying to sketch. Minus tan, and it was theta, actually. Okay? So looking back at the examples, if we have a negative outside of our function, then it's a reflection in the x-axis. There should be an s there. Okay? Reflection in the x-axis. So let's do that. Now, first of all, I'm just going to draw the tan graph just using a dashed line, okay? Here are my asymptotes. We can't have uh, tan 90, so it has to be an asymptote. And we can't have tan of minus 90, so that has to be an asymptote. And I'll just get it in the right place, and it has to be straight as well, like that, okay? 
And where else are we going to have an asymptote? We're going to have them kind of off over here as well, so that's fine, okay? If I draw tan of theta, it's going to look something, and I'll do it in a grey, it's going to look something like that, okay? Pass through there and then go up off like that, okay? And also uh, there as well, to pass through up like that, and then passing through up there and down there. That is our tan graph, and we looked at that in the last lesson. Minus tan, like I just said, is a reflection in the x-axis, or your horizontal axis. Here we've got theta, so that's fine. So we're just going to flip the graph, so that we'll highlight it in red. We actually want to look at the red graph, and that is just a reflection in the x-axis, kind of like that. Not perfect, but that is kind of what we're wanting, this kind of shape, a reflection in the x-axis, uh, like that. So the red graph is y is minus tan theta, okay? And the gray graph is y is tan of theta. And hopefully you can see now why that minus gives a reflection in the um, horizontal axis. It just flips it over like a mirror line.